Hello, good morning or good evening whenever you are watching. So this video is about uh, getting started with uh, development in a Linux environment when you are using some other operating system, for example, Windows. So before I begin this video, I will start with some tips for you. So the tips that I'm going to share are, first of all, this session is for absolute beginners, for the first time users of Linux. So I will introduce you to the CLI or command line interface, uh, some text editors like VS Code, etc. So it's recommended that you increase the video speed to 2x, uh, then it will be much faster for you. Another thing is that uh, this video is divided into multiple chapters, so you can just skip to the particular section uh, that you need. And uh, I have not edited this video, so suppose I'm downloading something, at that point you can just fast forward the video 10 seconds, 15 seconds like that. So the next thing that I'm going to say is that the contents, what I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, we'll uh, get introduced to concepts like Linux, Ubuntu, WSL, all this stuff. Then we'll go through some fundamental basic Linux commands. Then I will discuss about some text editors and how you can set up VS Code to work with WSL. Then I'll show you how to install very popular and very common software in uh, Linux uh, environment. And finally, we'll pack up with some closing words. So that's it. Before I start, I'm just going to give you a brief uh, introduction uh, to this, uh, some basic terms. Like what is an OS? The OS or operating system is basically something that runs on top of the hardware and that enables all the other applications to run. So for example, we are uh, using Windows, right? So Windows is an example of OS or Android. These are all operating systems. Now what is a kernel? Kernel is like the skeleton of the OS or it may be called the engine of the OS or a heart of the OS. So it is something very fundamental. Now, uh, at the right side, you see a very oversimplified diagram of how we are going to run Ubuntu. Okay, so basically Windows is running on top of the hardware. On top of Windows, the Linux kernel is running. So there's a specific version of Linux kernel that is actually uh, created by Microsoft. Basically, Linux is created by Linus Torvalds. Linux is an open source project. So anybody can create copies of Linux or anybody can do anything. So it's an open source project. So uh, Microsoft has created a specific version for WSL. So on top of that kernel, the Ubuntu is running. Okay, so uh, running this way, running using WSL, WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. Using this way is much faster than using a VM. So you can use a virtual machine. There are emulators like this VM, uh, where Workstation, Player, this kind of software is there on which you can run, or you can run directly on top of your hardware. So for example, now I'm running Windows on top of my hardware. You can actually dual boot with Ubuntu and run uh, Ubuntu on top of your hardware. So uh, the VM method or the dual boot method that is not of concern in this video. I'm not going to discuss those things in this video. Those are completely separate things. You can Google search or I may make videos in future about them. But this video is for WSL. So now let me first start with what is WSL. WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. So I will give this link in the description. This is the complete documentation of WSL. This is the official documentation by Microsoft. So you can refer uh, these pages for any kind of help. So the first thing that we are going to do is that update Windows. So if you do not have the latest version of Windows, please update it. You need Windows 11 because see, in Windows 10, some features of WSL are not supported. So it's strongly recommended that you use Windows 11 if you are uh, trying to uh, follow what I'm doing here. And the first thing will go is that we'll go to this Microsoft Store. So actually you can install WSL from the PowerShell from the command line, but as this video is geared towards beginners, I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to show you the simple GUI way. So you just go to Microsoft Store and you simply type WSL. That's it. You type it and you press enter. So it will show you all the search results. So the first result that you get is the official result. It is by Microsoft Corporation. You simply click get. And Another software that we need is Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is actually a distro, a distribution of, okay, just a second. Here it prompts me for my password. Actually, I'm using an, another uh, second account in my Windows. So that's why I need to enter the administrator password to install. Okay, now what is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is basically a distribution of Linux. So as I said, uh, Linux is the kernel. On top of that, there are many OS like Ubuntu is there, Pop OS is there, Kali is there, Fedora is there. There is one uh, thing called Garuda Linux that is also there. There are so many distributions uh, like that. Uh, Black Hat is there. Uh, no, I think Red Hat is there, not Black Hat, sorry. Uh, then there are tons and tons of distros and each distro has its own flavors. Like Ubuntu has many flavors like Pop OS, uh, Zordin OS, Elementary OS. It goes on and goes on. So you can try all this operating system on your hardware, on your machine. You need something called uh, a, a pen drive, right? You need a pen drive and another thing that you need is a flasher. So there is a very good flashing software called Balena HR. 
you simply start this on Google, will get this. This actually helps you to flash the OS. So how can you actually dual boot? I'm giving you a little glimpse of that. So uh, you have to install this Balan HF flashing software. You just install it for on your system. And what you need is the ISO file. For example, you want to run Ubuntu on your hardware, right? Run directly on your uh, hardware. So in that case, you go to Ubuntu.com and there you will get this download option. And there you get the latest LTS 22.04, right? You click here, you will get the ISO file. And then you have to flash that ISO file in a pen drive. And you have to shut down your computer and using that pen drive, you need to boot. And then you can install and all the stuff. So that is a lot of details are there. I'm not going into the details. You can uh, look them up in the internet. So the latest LTS in 2022, currently this is 22.04. This is the latest long-term support version. Okay. So in Microsoft Store, what I will do is that in Ubuntu, I will look for 22.04. See, the 18 is there, 20 is there. So 18, it was released long back. Uh, this 20 was released in 2020. And this 22.04, this was released this year, 2022. So I will simply click get. So what I have done, basically what I have done is that first I have searched WSL, I installed WSL. Then I searched Ubuntu 22. And I am installing this now. So you can install this from your Microsoft Store application, right? Now, once I have installed this, I will click on open. So actually it launches this terminal window. You see in the taskbar, this new window was launched. I click here. So first time it is installing, it will take a few minutes. Let us wait for it. Yeah, this is right. Now, uh, enter new Unix username. So you just create a new username, for example, whatever name you want to give you, and then you create a password. Okay. You retype the password okay so here you are seeing some error messages you don't have to worry about this actually this G and H drives these are actually uh, this is basically on my system I have this two extra drives this is actually connected to Google Drive so WSL actually cannot access that that's why it's showing error you don't have to worry about that Actually, WSL by default tries to access all the files uh, of your system basically from WSL you can access any file so WSL is actually integrated with your system. Now you may have some doubts, like when you're running in a VM, you actually have to allocate some RAM, you have to allocate some uh, storage for your uh, Ubuntu, for your operating system to run. But in WSL, everything is dynamically allocated. So whatever RAM is required, it will be provisioned. Whatever storage is required, it will be provisioned. And by default, WSL is integrated with Windows. So from WSL, you can access the Windows files also. So everything is possible. So that's why actually my WSL was trying to access this G and H drives, but it actually failed because it does not have permissions to do so. You don't have to worry about these messages. Some kind of error messages may come when you're installing it first time. So I'll simply close this. Now the question that comes is how will I know if everything has been installed properly or not? So simply go to the start menu and here you just simply search. You search WSL, see? It has actually opened. See, if I see it under the apps section, I have this WSL. So here I'm getting the uninstall option. That means I have already installed it. That's why it's showing me. It's an app in my system. Another thing is that if I say search for Ubuntu, here also I will get this Ubuntu 22.04. This is installed and I'm getting the option to uninstall. That means it has been installed in my system, right? So this is fine. Now what I will do is that I will search for Windows Terminal. So I'll get this application. If it is not installed in your system, then first of all, you go to the Microsoft Store and search Terminal. Okay, go to the Microsoft Store, uh, search for Terminal and here you will get this by Microsoft Corporation Windows Terminal. I already have it. So that's why it's showing me open. If you do not have this application, then just click get. It's generally by default installed in Windows 11. Okay. Now, what I will do is that I will search for terminal and I will pin this to my taskbar. So I right click, I pin to taskbar. So I can easily have it. So if I open it, by default, it opens PowerShell. But now, as we are developers, we will prefer to have a Linux environment. So for that, what we will do is that I'll Mm, click this down arrow and here I have this option to open Ubuntu so I can open Ubuntu so for the first time it's uh, showing me these errors actually it tries to access all the drives on my computer and but it cannot access G or H that's why it's showing me some errors so you don't have to worry about these errors on my system so I can run this basic command called clear if I run the clear command whatever is shown in the terminal will be cleared that's it now let me show you some uh, how you can how you can customize this terminal you go to the settings and the default profile let me set it to ubuntu okay with this icon okay so now i have to click save another thing i go to this ubuntu profile and i scroll a little bit i get this appearance option here i will change the color scheme so i don't like this uh, purple color i will go with the tango dark whatever color you want you can choose you can choose whatever font you like and you can choose the font size all these things then finally here in this transparency, I will just make it a little bit transparent. I will click save. 
Now when I see this, you see the color has changed. Earlier it was purple, now it is like black and a transparency effect has been added, right? So this was the introduction basically. The last thing that we are going to discuss inside introduction is basically about the APT package manager. So what is APT? So APT is basically a package manager. So just like you have Windows, uh, the Microsoft store that we had, we installed, uh, we can install any kind of app. So if you go to this Microsoft store, you can install whatever app you like. You can install WhatsApp or uh, Telegram or whatever application you like from this Microsoft store. You can install the games, okay, Spotify, Netflix, whatever you want, you can install. So this is actually a package manager. It actually helps you to manage all the software that is installed. You can uninstall a software, you can update a software. All this is managed by Microsoft Store. Now, if you're using Android, you obviously use this Play Store, right? From where you install the games and other stuff. So similarly, in the command line, you have some package managers. These actually help you to install packages, to update them, all these things, right? So APT app is actually the package manager, the default uh, and the standard package manager in the Ubuntu operating system. Okay. So if you are using Mac OS, then you will be using something called Brew. Homebrew is uh, the package manager for Mac. So that you can use. Now, first of all, we will actually, when you have installed Linux for the first time, or suppose you are using a server, on a server you have installed Linux, first thing you have to do is that you have to update all packages. So I will use this command sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade and a minus y. This actually gives a permission to uh, do all the upgrades. Minus y is just a yes. If you just put this minus y, it will not prompt you again. So let us understand what this command means. This sudo command actually stands for super user do. So you are invoking uh, this command as a super user. So actually it will prompt you for your password, right? So in Linux, whenever you have to install something or any uh, thing you have to do special, then you need to use this super user. So in Linux, there are actually multiple uh, permission systems. So I will not discuss about that in detail, but whenever you need to install something, you have to use this sudo command. So I will put my password here and it will start installing. So for the first time when you do this, it may take some time because it will install and it will uh, update all the packages inside this uh, Ubuntu. So here we go. This is being installed. So it is trying to fetch the list of packages and all the details about the packages. So it will take some time. You can fast forward a little bit now. Oh, now it's done. Now I can use a clear command to clear everything, right? Now what you see over here, this is called a prompt. You see, see this dollar sign and you see your name and your machine's name, something like this. This is called a prompt. Now currently I'm in the bash shell. Now what is a shell? Shell is basically the program that takes your text input and runs that. So whatever commands you're giving is being executed by the shell. Now there are different shells. For example, now in Ubuntu, we are actually currently using the bash shell. That is a default shell in Ubuntu. We also have other shells like the Windows PowerShell we have. So inside Windows, we are having this Windows PowerShell. So, so this is actually running inside Windows. So you see, you're inside this particular folder. Inside the C drive, I'm inside the users folder, inside that the guest zero. So I have a user account called guest zero. I'm inside that thing. So by default, it will open your home folder like this. So this is the Windows PowerShell. Similarly, in Ubuntu, what we have by default, this is the default shell. There is a bash shell. There are actually multiple shells available in the market. You can install any of them, whatever you wish. And also this thing, this front part, this prompt, this is called the prompt. This can be customized. So you can add symbols or whatever you want, right? So let me show you one interesting article uh, in Medium. Medium is a platform for articles. Shivam, somebody named Shivam wrote an article about customizing terminal. So just search this kind of word. I will give the link in the description. So basically, this is a fantastic article. This is a very popular article. Uh, here, actually, you see, you can put this kind of styles in your prompt. Okay. So you can use this shell called ZSH. This is another very popular shell. In Mac OS, ZSH is very, uh, it's actually by default, the default shell. So in Windows, the default shell is PowerShell. In Ubuntu, the default shell is the Bash shell. And in Mac OS, the default shell is the ZSH. For me personally, I love the ZSH shell. I personally use it. And uh, it's the coolest shell actually. So you can, this article shows you how you can do everything. And you can actually customize your 
terminal to look cool so you have so many kind of styles are there uh, there are many shells and many customizations you can so many themes are available so many things are available so if you just google search and you will get uh, uh, used to these things slowly you can actually customize and make it very pro level like hacker kind of stuff like cool stuff you can make it for now we just keep it simple and let's move to understanding some fundamental linux commands but before i do that i will show you if you have any doubts about wsl you can refer to this official wsl documentation so if you want to install wsl you go this and uh, in wsl the default linux distribution what whatever uh, i only have one linux distro currently installed so by default it is the default but suppose you are having multiple distros installed then in that case you can choose what is your default so if you want to uh, learn about wsl this is the official resource and this is the best resource to learn now let me start with the fundamental linux commands so first thing that we learn is the ls command so this actually stands for list directory so in my current directory there is nothing okay now one question that may arise where is this uh, wsl folder located like what, what the files inside wsl where is it actually in the windows system so if i open my windows file explorer now in if you are in windows 11 this by default will show you this linux option inside linux you will see this ubuntu 22.04 this is my folder actually this is the folder for linux inside this everything is there so this is actually the folder structure of linux you don't have to worry this is boot dev etc home as you go on to learn different things this will become very familiar with you each of this folder has um, some purpose so when you actually run linux on your hardware this folders will be there only only this folders will be there but now actually i'm running linux on top of windows right so we are actually having this inside this linux folder so this is actually not a folder actually it's actually windows has its own file system and structure but if you are on windows 11 the latest version of windows 11 it will by default show on your left panel in this panel you will automatically see this thing called linux inside that you will see all the distros so each folder will be for one distro and the size of this folder is dynamically allotted so you don't have to worry so you can store more and more files inside it but where is our home folder so this folder where is this folder now if you want to see what is my present working directory directory means just a folder i will just type this command pwd so this will show me in which folder i am inside linux i am inside this folder slash home slash anik so i'm currently in the ubuntu so inside ubuntu i am here slash home slash anik so i can go here like for example i have to find home inside it anik so i'm actually over here so some files are there over here so if i just uh, run ls i should be able to see those files but uh, unfortunately these files are not being shown why you have to understand this all these files they are starting with dot the names of these files are starting with dot these files are called dot files so when you run the ls command by default it does not show the dot file so to run ls minus a this stands for all so it will show you this is just a flag you can use this option this minus a is just an option okay so now all these files are being shown you see all these files are being shown so by default when you open the ubuntu terminal you have this your working directory is the home directory so inside slash home inside the user actually inside this ubuntu also you can create multiple users so i am inside this uh, default user there is anik and this is actually in windows how you can see that is over here inside your linux you will get this option in your side panel okay now this is actually inside your c drive actually but it's actually created in a different way like where it is actually physically located is not actually in c drive not actually in d drive but it is somewhere so uh, so it has a like windows have a lot of protocols and a lot of things so that is not the, the topic of concern for this video i'll not go into details of the file system and other stuff but you can find it easily in windows 11 but if you're in windows 10 it actually may not show over here so i'm not sure about windows 10 but so that's why i'm recommending use windows 11. now we don't need to understand these files now this all of them like bash rc and this dot profile these have their function as you go on to set up more complicated development environments these files will be required in future but for now let us just skip them so if i want to create a new folder i'll just use this make dir so in windows we can all, we all know how to create a new folder right so you just create right click and you have this new option and you create a new folder like this but in the terminal if i want to create a new folder i will use this make dir command so after make dir i will put the name of the folder so let me say project now if i run ls i will get this folder ls so from here also i can see just over here just i need to uh, do a little bit refresh um, i just go one step back and go inside it yeah now project is showing so you just need to refresh it something uh, yeah there is a refresh button so if you just refresh it will show now let me come back to the terminal 
and over here if i want to move into the project directory then i'll do cd project so you don't need to type the entire word so if i just write p and if i just press tab it will automatically complete the name so now i'm inside project and how do i understand i can see the prompt is showing me that i'm inside projects directly so the prompt actually shows me the username the name of the machine and the folder that i'm in okay and the cursor is blinking that means i can enter whatever you want now now if i want to go back if i go want to go back to this uh, home directory this slash home slash anik this directory is called home directory for that particular user so this is the user's home directory so if i want to go back to that then i'll just press cd so just uh, doing cd actually takes us to the user's home directory so now let us see some applications like if i want to create multiple folders what i will do so let me create another folder like make did and let us go say uh, whatever you want uh, photos so you create a folder named photos and then you have these two folders called photos and project now i want to move into photos now inside photos i can create another folder let's say make did school photos so let's say school so i have inside photos i have school now i can move into school so you can see your path over here still if you want to see your exact path you can just uh, run pwd you can see the entire path this is the path where you are currently in right now if i want to go one step back i am now inside the school folder if i want to go to the photos folder i will just do cd space dot dot so this will take me to a previous folder again i do cd space dot dot it will take me to the previous folder like this now if i want to go into school i can just directly do p i just write p i press tab so it will automatically complete then i just type s that is my school then i again press tab it will auto complete oh sorry uh, i actually uh, school is not in projects so that's why it's not auto completing i have to first go to photos then i press s i press tab and it's inside the school folder so automatically see uh, tab is very useful over here because you can auto complete and there are actually some extensions that you can download uh, and set up uh, some shells like zsh they have some advanced auto complete features so you can download those extensions uh, that will give you more advanced auto complete for other kind of commands and other things by default you get a very good quality of auto completion now if i press enter so i am now inside this now from here if i want to directly go into my home uh, directory i'll just do cd now I'm back to my home directory. So we learned how to use the ls command and how to use the mcdir command and how to use the cd command. So cd will help you to navigate. cd stands for change directory. So we can uh, move into whatever folder we want. Okay. Now the most important thing is that I have created all these folders. Now if I want to delete them. So I will just use the rm command. rm stands for remove. And in order to remove a folder, you have to do minus rf. This is the option that you have to provide. And R stands for recursive, F stands for force. So we will go into more details later, but just let us use it. And let me, if I just do uh, photos, so then it will delete the photos folder and everything within that folder will also be deleted, right? Now we will discuss the most important thing. Uh, how can you learn these commands? Obviously in Google, if you just Google search about any command, you will get full resources about that command. You can also find a lot of YouTube videos. But suppose you are on the terminal and you from the terminal only you want to learn without using internet. You can do that. You can just need to invoke the help command. So suppose I want to know about the ls command. I want to know what are the options that I can put after the ls. For example, minus a, this is one option. Similarly, we can put a lot of options. What are the options available? And what is the function of each option? What, what each option will do? If I want to know that, then I will use this help flag. So if I just do this, and I will get this complete help about this command. I have to scroll up a little bit. Yeah. So this shows me how to use. So first I have to do ls. And then I will do the option. And then I will put the file. Uh, if I want to list uh, something under that uh, folder. Okay. So by default, ls will show me everything under the current directory. But you can use ls on some different directory also. You can uh, want If you want to know what is inside that directory, you, you just do ls space the name of the directory it will show you everything that is within that directory so these are all the flags that you can use see a b c d whatever flags are there so these flags are different for different command line applications it depends so whoever is the developer of this application they have decided what each flag will do so these are decided by the developer and you can learn them uh, by just using the help command similarly there is another command called the version Using the version command, you can know what version you are running. For example, if I done ls version, 
it will show me what version of ls it is actually running okay now one thing that you have to do is that uh, how can you create a file so one simple way to create a file let me just create some blank file i'll use this touch command this will help me to create a file so let me create some file called hello.txt if you do this it will create a blank file so if i do just do ls i will see this new file is there hello.txt this will be completely blank file now let me show you some operations how can i uh, copy paste a file how can i copy a file from one location to another or how can i move a file so let me show you all that so if i want to move this file hello.txt inside the project directory so i will do move hello.txt and after that i will put project so what this will do is that it will move this file into this directory so if i press enter now if i do ls i don't see hello.txt over here now if i do ls project so inside project now i can see hello.txt so this hello.txt has been moved from my home directory inside the project directory another thing that you can do is the copy so now let me move to the project directory now if i want to copy the hello.txt file so i will just do cp hello.txt and i want to copy it to my home directory so i will just do slash this actually indicates my home directory so now if i do ls inside project it is obviously there let me go to the home directory and again do ls so in my home directory also the hello.txt is present now what this tilde slash stands for this this actually stands for the home directory okay this tilde so that's it so i have discussed in detail the ls command the cd command the mcdir command the okay now if i want to delete the file for example this hello.txt is there to delete it i'll just use the rm command rm hello.txt that's it now if i do ls i will not find this file anymore okay so these are all the comments ls cd mcdir rm rm minus rf and the mv and cp so we have discussed all these comments okay and if you want to see and explore these files visually then you can have this windows uh, explorer this is the explorer that you use for your windows file and this can also open the files inside your uh, wsl you can see the file over here okay so inside project we have this hello.txt you can see all the files over here from your windows explorer i have also discussed uh, the help and version flags now let me discuss this thing about the man page man stands for manual so if i just do man ls it will show me the user manual for ls so you can just type man and then something uh, any command you uh, type so if that command uh, if that program has a manual then uh, the manual will be shown over here right so using my arrow keys i can actually navigate this thing and if i press q this will exit let me show you some cool commands like for example ping ping is a command to actually check if i have internet connection or not you can see the packets of data being sent what is the time being taken all this stuff so if i just do ping google.com and press enter so it will start so this is the ip address of google and it is exchanging bytes of data i'll not go into technical details here just let me stop the ping if i want to stop any comment i have to do control c now see one important thing that you have to remember in the terminal if you have to paste something or copy something you don't use the normal uh, control c control v you have to use control shift c and control shift v so suppose if i have to paste something in the terminal suppose from google you googled something and you got some command in the google search for example this is the documentation of wsl and so, or whatever it is some documentation you have seen and you have to copy and paste it suppose you copied this and now you want to paste this in the terminal so never ever use control c control c will not do your job control c is for stopping something so this process is running and if i want to stop this i will just do control c so this was stop it will show me some statistics at the end and now i can clear my terminal by using the clear command there is another command called top that will show me all my uh, cpu and memory percentage all this stuff so how much of my cpu is being used okay and uh, how much memory is being used and all this stuff so all the applications are being shown the users will be shown so currently i'm not running anything it's you see all zero zero is being shown because nothing is running but if you run multiple applications suppose if i run a while loop just uh, for showing you for example i, I open a new terminal uh, in ubuntu and if i just check the python version python is by default installed and here let me open the python shell and just let me run a infinite loop so i'm doing an infinite loop 
so it's just keeping on printing hello 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 you see the cpu percentage has gone up to 86.3 percent uh, unfortunately it is not using any memory so if you want to use some memory then you have to do some infinite recursive function you do that it will you just see the memory will just shoot up so the cpu is fully consumed it's just keeping on doing this job so if i now do control c i can stop this process so you see keyboard interrupt was there so this was stopped and if i do control d i can exit the python shell now you see the cpu has again gone back to zero so this is the beauty using the top command you can see the cpu and memory consumption if i want to stop this i simply do control c uh, control c is not working oh yes it worked that's it so we have discussed these comments now let me show you some cool really cool stuff so there is something called neofetch so neofetch is a software it's a command line software that shows you some cool uh, images you see this kind of thing will be shown on your system so uh, some cool terminal stuff will be shown so how to install neofetch so in ubuntu we have this apt package manager right so i'll just do sudo apt apt-get install we'll use this install command install neofetch so it is actually listed in the official uh, repository list so i can just use it directly and i need to enter my password so it will prompt me do you want to continue i will press yes just y and press enter so this will install neofetch Yes, now neofetch has been installed. If I run the neofetch command, but before that, let me clear the terminal. If I run neofetch, so you will see this kind of beautiful thing will be shown. The Ubuntu logo is being displayed in the terminal by using text. And here you will get the CPU information, whatever CPU you have. You will see what shell you are currently running, uh, how many packages are installed in your system, uh, how much time the system is running, and what kernel is running. You see the kernel is actually not the official Linux kernel. It is the Linux kernel that is duplicated by Microsoft. Microsoft has created a little bit different version so that it can easily run on the Windows system. Okay, so this is actually Microsoft standard WSL2. This is the name of the kernel, right? So, so we are running Ubuntu 22.04 on Windows 10, right? So this is the beautiful output of NeoFetch. Using NeoFetch, we'll get some basic system information and also your operating system, the logo will be printed and some colors will be printed. So this looks really cool. And if you have seen the Matrix movie, uh, you will see some letters coming in hackers screen or actually in movies, what they show is not true at all. But yes, those kind of things are there. Uh, so there's a software called C-Matrix that was inspired by that. So you just install it by sudo apt get uh -huh. install c matrix install this sorry sorry i just made a typo so this was installed now if i run c matrix so this will show me this kind of thing so inside the terminal all these letters are falling so this was inspired by the movie the programmer actually they got inspired by the movie and they created something for the terminal if you want to stop this just press ctrl c that's it it stopped so I have shown you some commands. I have shown you how you can install uh, things. Okay. Uh, so suppose now if I want to check what is the version of Cmatrix, I can just do Cmatrix hyphen hyphen version. So this will show me what version it is using. Unfortunately, it does not have a version flag. This flag is not present. So they do not have this minus minus version flag. So actually, instead of returning me error, what they did is that they have shown me the usage. Now I can do Cmatrix minus capital V. So now the version is being shown. Now when this version was compiled, that is also being shown. Uh, so the email of the creator is also being shown. The GitHub repository of the creator is also, so whatever information uh, the creator wants to show, they can show that. Now suppose if I want to uninstall a particular software, 
so I can use the apt package manager to uninstall it. So, so if I just run apt help, so here you get there is a remove option. Okay, so apt and apt get are like little bit similar, but they are like a little bit different again. So I'll not get into technical details, but yes, you have to use apt for some packages and apt get for some other packages. So the technical details will be too long. I'll not enter in that in this particular video. So let me clear the terminal and if I suppose want, I want to remove the NeoFetch, I want to remove the cmatrix installation, then what I will do is that sudo apt get instead of install, I'll do this remove, remove cmatrix. So if I run this, it will ask me for confirmation, I'll do yes. Now this is removed. Now if I want to run this cmatrix minus v, if I want to run this, it will show me error, no such file or directory. So it is not able to find this cmatrix. Uh, the binary file is not found, so it will show me error, right? So using this apt uh, package manager, you can do all this cool stuff. You can install software, you can uh, remove them, you can uh, update them, everything. Now let me come to the next topic, that is, let us go into text editors. So what are text editors? Let me start with absolute basics. You have this notepad in your windows, right? So using this notepad, you can write any text. This is a text editor. You can write or edit text and then you can save it, right? So similarly, in the terminal also, you can have uh, many text editors. So you can edit text right from the terminal itself. Okay. So uh, first, let me show you how you can create a text file. One way to create a text file is using a touch command. So touch text.txt. So the text file was created. So I have this file text.txt. Now, for example, if I want to display the contents of this text file, then I will just do cat cat text.txt. So this file has no contents. That's why nothing was printed. Okay. So if I want to insert some content into this text file, what I will do is that uh, echo, whatever I want to show. So echo is just nothing. Echo will just echo whatever you write. So echo hello. So it just gave me hello. So you just use the echo command to get whatever you write. So after echo, you can give whatever you want and it will just give you that. Now there is a option to pipe. So echo hello and you pipe this into some text file. So the output of this echo command will go into the text file. I press enter. Now if I do cat text.text, .text, I see hello. So this is a very simple method. So you use the echo command, you write something and you, uh, you pipe it into the text file. So like this, you can put anything inside the text file. But this is not a text editor. This is just a very simple terminal. Sometimes you need to make small changes, you can do this, fine. But we need a proper text editor to edit text. By default, inside Ubuntu, we have this text editor called Nano. So if I just run, uh, run Nano text.text, .text, it will open this kind of interface. So using the arrow keys, I can move, I can just start writing. It is not a modal editor. So you can just directly start writing. Modal editor means it has some modes. I'll show you some modal editors, like for example, Vim. I'll show you that. But before that, you see, Nano is much simple. You just can directly start writing. And when you are going to exit, you just do Control X. Now it will prompt you, do you want to save the file? You just uh, press yes. And it will, uh, the file name is being shown. You can change the name or whatever. If you want to keep it same, then just press enter. So this was saved. So now if I do cat text.text, .text, see the file was changed. So two hello lines are there. So I entered this hello using, the second line was entered using nano, what I did just now, okay. So other than nano, there are text editors like Emacs or Vim. Again, Vim is also by default installed in Ubuntu. If I just do vi and then if I just do uh, whatever, if we just, just do vi and press enter, it will open the Vim editor. Now, Vim is very dangerous, very complicated. For beginners, it will be very complicated and uh, how will you exit this, how will you do that? Well, let me show you a little bit. I don't know much Vim. I don't personally use Vim, but still uh, many people use it because this is completely uh, keyboard based. You don't have to use mouse. You're, you don't have to use your cursor for it. So it's very optimized for some people. Actually, mouse actually uh, slows you down. So some people use this Vim. So you just do I, I will take you to insert mode and you press enter. Now I'm in the insert mode. So whatever I write will be written. So whatever I'm writing, it's being written. Now if I press escape, it will go away from the insert mode. Now if I want to navigate the file, I will use this J, uh, just this JK I can use. For K, I'll just go up. With J, I can go down. So J means go one line down. K means go one line up. And you have this uh, L. Using L, you can go right. With H, you go left. So with H and L, you go right and left. So you can select like this. Now, if I want to um, exit, okay. I want to save this file and I want to exit. So I'll just do 
this column now i mean actually in the uh, command mode there are two modes one mode is the insert mode when you are actually writing text and one mode is the command mode using the command mode you do all this command say jk you are going up and down all this is being done in the command mode and when you want to insert text you go to the insert mode okay so let me show you again if i press i and if i press enter now it's in the insert mode so whatever i write will be written i can write anything if i want to exit the insert mode i will press escape that's it now if i want to save this file and go away i'll just do colon x and then after that let me give some name of the file so let me give whatever dot txt and press enter thank god i have exited vi now exiting vi is very a lot of people get trapped they open vi and they can't exit it so exiting is kind of very complicated kind of stuff and um, if you want to uh, learn vi then you can just google search uh, vim cheat sheet and the first link you get is a very good cheat sheet so here you can see all the commands that you have you can learn all these commands there are so many commands personally i don't use vim i never use vim i never intend to i to use vim so now let us go to some really cool terminal based text editor that is micro so if you want to edit text in terminal micro is very useful micro okay sorry uh, text editor you just google search and by default you will get the page and this is the command to download so what is curl curl is something that fetches some from url from url you will fetch the contents of the url and what is happening is this if i when i run this command let me explain this so https get mic uh, dot ro if i control click on this it will open this so get mic dot ro this website is actually having some text this is having some bash script this thing is having some bash script okay now what curl does is that curl actually fetch it, fetches the content of this thing so whatever text is there inside this uh, link it will fetch that and this is the pipe command so this one uh, line you are seeing so whatever content is there it will, it's going to bash so bash will execute that so if i press enter it will start downloading so this is very simple one line command to install micro so so this has been installed and if i just do ls it has been installed in the current directory the binary file of micro so if i just do dot slash micro it will open the micro text editor it is so beautiful text editor the color uh, is there and everything is there so you can just write and it's you can use mouse so you, you can move around you can use mouse in the nano or in the vim you cannot use mouse but over here you can use mouse you can just do everything and the everything is very simple you can just if you want to copy something you just do control c and you want to paste you just do control v it's it simple but in vim you can't do this in vim uh, control c will just be something else like in vim to copy paste you have to learn something else but micro is very much like normal notepad normal text editors you can do control c control v everything so it's so cool so beautiful if you want to save it just do control s uh, now it is asking for the file name so let me give hello dot txt and if you want to exit this i just do control q that's it it is so simple and so beautiful i just love micro so on terminal i personally use micro okay now there's another thing called gedit get g edit okay so if you're using ubuntu that's by default the text editor in ubuntu uh, that's uh, the, uh, the gnome interface is there okay so if i run gedit so it is not found but it gives me the command to install so if i just copy how to copy control shift c and how to paste control shift v and i press enter i do yes and then yes it will be installed so we are going we are going somewhere right slowly we started with absolute basics of uh, the basic commands and now we are actually installing software we are going into more and more details about using this uh, command line interface this uh, ubuntu system so it is taking some time to install you can just fast forward it actually this is a graphical user interface app so when i launch uh, get it it will be a complete gui it is not something like on the terminal it will be a complete independent window will be launched for this so that's why it's a, it's a much larger application than the previous ones so c matrix new of they were installed very fast because they're much relatively smaller size application this is a relatively larger size so 
so in the meantime what you can do is that the next thing that we'll do is that we'll be starting to use vs code the most popular ide uh, the most popular text editor so here we go let me go to the visual studio code website so i'll put the link in the description code.visualstudio.com and here you click download for windows so in my downloads folder let me download this file let me come back to the terminal to see the progress yeah 99 percent progress yeah jedit has been installed let me clear the terminal and now we see if i launch jedit yeah so you see this gui is launched now this feature is not there in windows 10 in windows 11 inside wsl if i launch some gui app graphical user interface app that will open so beautiful now inside this i can write whatever i want i can click save if i click save this will open this nautilus now, this file manager kind of thing you're getting this is the nautilus i save it i close it now if i run nautilus dot dot means current directory it will open the see nautilus is equivalent to windows file explorer in windows you have this file explorer this app you have you can see all the files and everything similarly in ubuntu you have this nautilus if i do this okay nautilus is not installed i have to install it sudo apt install nautilus okay so see one thing you can do you can use this up arrow to see the previous command i just in the control the up down arrows are there so if I just do up arrow, yeah, I got this comment. I just edit this. I remove Jedit and now I type naughty less. Now let me see the progress. Yeah, VS Code has been installed. Let me click here on this exe file. So I have to accept the license agreement there and click next. Click next. Click next. So over here, some additional tasks are there. Just check, tick all of them. These are all useful. So VS Code is now being installed. Let me go back to the terminal. So actually, I'm doing both tasks at the same time. VS Code is being installed here and also we are using, installing this uh, Nautilus here. Right. So let me finish this. VS Code is being launched. Beautiful. So let me show you around the interface of VS Code. So when you open VS Code for the first time, it will show you this kind of getting started page. So this shows you some basic things that you can do with VS Code. Uh, let me close this get started page. On top, you have all these options. Now over here on the left, you have this file explorer. You can open any folder. So in VS Code, I can open any folder. So inside my Windows uh, thing, this is my Windows file explorer. I just create a new folder, for example. I create a new folder and I name it, for example, uh, code whatever you want you just name it and I select the folder so this folder has been opened so I can trust this thing and automatically this will open this folder I can create a new file in the explorer you can see over here in the let me zoom it a little bit so in the explorer you can see this uh, plus icon plus file so whatever file I want I can give my file name dot txt I can give a file name and here I can just start writing whatever I want in the file so if I do control s it will automatically save if I want to open a folder, create a new folder, this, this icon for new folder. So you create a new folder and inside the folder I create a new file. So you see, and here you can collapse the structure, collapse and open the folder. So this is how we use VS Code. Now in VS Code we have this search feature. So whatever word you want to search, for example, inside file name I have written all these words. You know, if I want to search the word file, I just put search. So you see, every instance of a particular word will be shown. Now this thing is for source control for Git. So Git is not a topic of discussion of this video. Some other video I'll discuss about Git. Now, VS Code is actually running in Windows. So if I open the terminal in VS Code, you can just click terminal over here and click new terminal. And there's a keyboard shortcut for that. Control shift backtick. This backtick is actually just below your escape key. So if I do control, uh, backtick actually you don't need shift you can just do direct control backtick it will also open with that also so over here this opens the powershell you see the name of the shell is over here as i'm pointing with my pointer it's powershell right so over here over here you can run the windows commands so by default vs code actually opens inside your windows system but what we actually want to do is that we want to run our programs inside linux why do we want to run our programs inside linux because see linux is where all these things were developed 
all this C, Python, okay, all this huge number of applications. Actually, applications that run on server, they are all developed on Linux. So, so many compilers are there, so many things are there that is, have actually been developed on Linux. They run well on a Linux environment. Those are easy to install, easy to maintain, and easy to do all these things in a Linux environment. So, all those developers, they actually use Linux. They don't use Windows. That's why Microsoft got really clever. And what Microsoft did is that they introduced this WSL so that developers can use Windows. Actually, developers by default use Linux or Mac. No developer in the world ever used Windows unless and until they're doing uh, developing apps for Windows, unless and until they're using chash, .NET, all these things. Uh, they generally don't use Windows. Developers and open source people, they generally hate Windows uh, because all of them, they love Linux or Mac. But now Windows have introduced this WSL thing. With this, you can run Linux very easily inside Windows. So I was installing this JDIT, uh, sorry, uh, Nautilus. What is the progress? Yes, this has been installed. I can just clear it. So let me show you Nautilus once, then I'll move to the VS Code. So if I just do Nautilus dot, it'll open this, right? So here you can just do create new folder. So hello, I just create one new folder. Like this, you can create new files and folders, whatever you want. So this is the uh, file explorer for Ubuntu. I close this and this is done. I press Control C to completely close this. So let me close the terminal and let me actually open my VS Code. So inside VS Code, currently VS Code is running inside what? Inside Windows. But what I want to do is that using VS Code, I want to access the WSL file system. So we have seen that there are files inside Linux, right? The, there's a file system inside Linux. So I want to access these things, these files. So what I will do is that, first thing, you go to this thing, this extensions icon. This is this icon is for extensions and here you search for WSL. You have to do this without this extension. You cannot integrate VS code with WSL. You click install. See for any kind of work, you can use any text editor. Text editor does not uh, vary your output. So VS code is just a text editor. Inside VS code, you can open terminal and you can just compile whatever you want to do. So you can use any text editor for your work for uh, running, for example, a C program or a Python program or any kind of program, you can use any text editor. The text editor will not give any variation in the output. Okay. It's just for writing the text. So if I see this WSL extension, it's actually published by Microsoft. Now I have installed it. So it is already installed. So I can close VS Code. Let me launch VS Code again. Now, there will be new options. Here you have this remote explorer option. Okay, so here under WSL targets, you will see this Ubuntu option. So you click here. So you click on this option to connect to WSL. Now this VS Code new instance, this new VS Code window that opened, it is actually connecting to the remote. You can actually connect to any remote server. So suppose Linux is running on a particular server, uh, any server like Google Cloud Platform server or Amazon Web Service server. That with that you can connect VS Code and from VS Code you can edit the text files that is on the server. So similarly over here WSL has been treated as a remote repository like a remote uh, server. So it is it's showing me connected to remote in the bottom left corner you see a green panel is being shown running inside Ubuntu right. So I can open a new folder. Now all this folder see this path that is it's showing it is showing in WSL. It's not showing the file path of Windows. So let me open the projects folder. Okay. So now I have opened the project folder. So whenever you open a new folder, you, it will always prompt you to trust. So only trust it because if you have created the folder. Suppose you have downloaded some folder from the internet. So there are actually some, why this trust author is there? Why do you think this pop-up is coming? Because inside VS Code, there can be some automatic scripts, some automatic setup scripts and other things are there uh, inside uh, some folder called .vs Code. So VS Code by default runs all those files. Okay, that is for the VS Code configuration. So if you don't trust a particular folder, don't open it. So when you're opening folders from the internet, downloading from the internet and opening that, for that you have to be careful. But suppose we are over here created, we ourselves have created the folder, we can easily trust it. So now, inside the project directory, we have this hello.txt file and we can edit it. So this is how you do VS Code. So let me give a short recap. You first install VS Code and then you install the WSL uh, extension. From this extensions tab, you in search WSL and you install this WSL extension, the official one by Microsoft. It's a blue tick Microsoft, you see, official one by Microsoft. You install that. And after that, you can easily connect. Now, let me show you some more tricks. If I close this 
uh, the file is not saved so let me show you one important thing there is auto save you just go to the settings and here uh, the first option that you say files auto save let me turn it on after delay and or you can simply search auto save like this so if you when you search auto save it will show you these options files auto save after delay so what is the delay this is thousand so actually this is the in the unit uh, milliseconds you see the unit is milliseconds so thousand milliseconds is perfect so when you save auto save you whatever you write will be auto saved you don't need to do control s if you just directly close it it will be automatically saved right now for example i want to open vs code in a particular folder for example i have opened this ubuntu terminal i have these folders let me create a new folder called new project so let me move inside this folder now i am inside this new fo project folder now i want to open vs code from this folder like in this folder i want to open vs code so i'll just do code space dot so it will open vs code in this folder you see new project folder this has been opened okay similarly suppose i am using windows inside windows i am so i am inside windows powershell for example so over here i can see all the folders inside windows let me go into the documents folder inside windows and here let me create another folder called new document okay so i have created a new document see actually this ls command this magdir command these commands actually do not traditionally work on windows powershell but now windows are, is very clever microsoft very clever they are now supporting this so actually if you just google search this uh, gfg article uh, difference between windows and linux commands if you just google search this you will find this very famous article from the geeks for geeks website okay not this article sorry yeah this one i will give the link all uh, articles that i am showing you all the links will be present in the description of the video so linux versus windows command so in windows actual command is actually dir dir in linux it is actually ls so to rename a directory you use ren in windows but m mv in linux similarly we have this copy in windows and cp in linux so there is some difference in windows we have uh, okay let me close this so there is actually a lot of difference between the windows command and their corresponding linux ones but now microsoft has got really clever they are now supporting the linux uh, commands so that linux users can feel friendly with windows okay now if i want to open vs code here in this folder just i will do code dot so now this has launched vs code inside windows now it is not inside my wsl it is now inside windows now two windows of vs code are running so when i am running in wsl in the file explorer it will show me that it's running in wsl so how do you know if the vs code is running inside wsl or inside windows then you can know see this wsl one is there so actually how is vs code running actually vs code is actually running in windows always the gui application that you are seeing this component of the application is actually running in windows there is another component of vs code there is a server side one so this is actually the vs code client there is another component there is a server side one that is actually running in wsl and it is this uh, client is actually connected to the server one so i will not get into details but this is roughly something that i want to say and wsl uh, actually very easily supports vs code because see vs code is a project of microsoft microsoft has created that so it's very well integrated with wsl but if you go to some other editors like for example uh, sublime text you cannot connect to uh, wsl like this you can run sublime text directly in wsl or you can run uh, sublime text in windows you cannot run sublime text in windows and then connect it to wsl that kind of provision is not there again you go to c lion uh, i think you can do that but some kind of connection is can be made you can uh, select your tool chain inside linux but again it's not as good as vs code so if you want to use windows and uh, take the maza of linux if you want to enjoy linux inside windows then i think wsl is the best way the fastest way it's much faster than uh, vm and if you want to uh, do coding then Uh, with wsl then vs code is no doubt the best editor and it's a complete ide actually this extensions actually make it id so whatever language you want to do you just install extensions for that suppose you want to do python you just search python and you will get the python's extensions you install that then all the features of python like auto completion all the linting debugging all these features will get installed so whatever language you want you just search that language and whatever uh, framework whatever thing you want to do it will automatically give you all those features right So we have discussed VS Code in full detail. I think uh, another thing, final thing, is that the theme change. You can select this color theme option, and you can change the theme. For example, to lot of themes are available. 
so you see different color themes are available and you can actually install new themes the light theme is so bad i don't like light so to install new theme you just go to the extensions here and here you just search for example github theme it is another popular theme so this is by github so install okay now let me change it to github default dark so i personally use this theme this is so cool i love this theme so let me create some new file hello.c for example i want to run uh, to write some c code over here so it looks really cool right okay let me down the size a little bit and if you want to change the size in the text editor you can go to your settings and here in the font size you can just change the text editor size so let me write some c code and uh, let us actually compile it so inside wsl if i open the terminal see now this vs code is running with connected to wsl so when i do control backtick by default it will open the bash by default it will open bash and by default it will open the folder where your project is currently in so I, this project is currently in this folder so it will open that folder by default now by default generally this gcc is installed so if i just search version okay it is not installed actually wsl does a very minimal installation of linux so that's why it's not installed but if you see actual ubuntu distro in actual ubuntu distro gcc is by default installed so just do sudo apt install gcc i just copy this and i paste this i need to put my password so this will install gcc uh, the standard c compiler In the meanwhile, let me write some C code. Okay, it's been installed. Actually, you can install it from this terminal or you can use the Windows terminal, whatever you want. You just need to be in the WSL environment. That's it. Now, if I want to check the GCC version, I just do GCC version. So it shows that what version it is running. So so if I want to compile this and then I just write gcc hello.c okay what is the uh, thing that we include Okay, we have to do this stdio.h sorry actually I personally don't use C I my personal language is Python I'm just starting to use C so here you get it stdio.h now if I try to again compile it here I get this a.out file this is the after compilation it gives me this file and if I just do dot slash a.out it will run this C program so this is how you can uh, do similarly if you want to compile uh, c++ programs then you need this g++ compiler so let me check if it is present or not it is not present so i can use this so these are the standard programs when it is not found they will automatically show you how to install it so i copy this and i paste this command i can open another terminal window by clicking plus over here so if you want to have multiple terminal windows you can have that so here let me check if i have python or not so python 3 version yes we have python the latest version is by default installed so this is how you can actually install programs by using uh, the apt there is another package manager called brew so if you want to use brew then you just need to search home view first link you get is this brew.sh and in order to install it you just copy this command and you paste it in your terminal you paste it but I will not go through the brew installation. APT is just enough for all the basic stuff. And using brew, you can install anything like brew install wget. So, using brew, you can install other softwares.
it's another very popular package manager and view is by default used in uh, your mac os right so the last thing that i'm going to show you is how can you update wsl so whenever windows makes some new features available uh, then you need to update wsl so you just go here and open your windows partial and i just need to do this wsl.exe then minus minus update it will check for updates and i have already the most recent version so nothing to do but suppose you are using old version then it will automatically update you to the latest version so i'll be uploading more videos like this so you can just uh, check links to those videos in the description you can check my channel out also if you are someone who wants to deploy something in a server you need a virtual private server for example to host your website or suppose some python code that you have written or something any kind of code that you want to host then you can use DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a fantastic platform digital ocean you just search it dot com so they give you complete solutions you can deploy a database or any kind of things uh, what you want, whatever you want to deploy so digital ocean is used by so many other companies uh, for their production and you see it's much cheaper than your gcp or aws or azure yeah digital ocean is much easier to use also so and DigitalOcean also posts a lot of articles. I love them art their articles. They post a lot of tutorials also. So if you want to get a free two hundred dollar credit on DigitalOcean, I have a link for that. You use my referral code. I'll put that in my description. When you use that, you get a free two hundred dollar credit. So using that, you can experiment and do whatever you want. You can uh, deploy to your uh, server. Any it's suppose you make some simple website and you can uh, run it, uh, deploy it to DigitalOcean. And if you have any doubts, I have shown you a lot of things in this video. So if you have any doubts regarding anything, you can first of all rewatch that part of video. Suppose you have some doubts uh, regarding the uh, VS Code setup and all this stuff, how I'm connecting it to WSL, all this stuff. So if you have any problem with that, you can rewatch the part of the video or you can just comment. If you have any question to ask, you comment it in the uh, comment section. I'll definitely try to answer that. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye.